Hello beautiful people, welcome to my channel. My name is Tochi. You guys are welcome to today's video. Guys, I have Ada here and she's going to be sharing a lot with you guys about being a domiciliary carer in the UK, like the reality. Guys, Ada here have gone through a lot and this is the situation of so many people working as domiciliary carers in the UK but they just cannot come out to say because their jobs are at risk and all that. So you should be aware of all these things, even to the extent that she almost lost her job because of a post she made on social media to get like her boss or her management, you know, saw something she posted and they were like, okay, you need to come and face this action and all of that. But yeah, I don't want to give all of it away because she's here to tell her story and so that you will know and think about it very well before you apply for a job in the UK, before you sign any contracts in the UK, make sure you read thoroughly, make sure you know what you're getting into so you don't come and regret. So I'm going to allow her just to introduce herself briefly and Yes, Hi guys, my name is Ada Kings. I'm a Nigerian YouTuber and I live in the United Kingdom with my family. You can call me Mama Positivity, okay? Because I spread a lot of positivity and I have a YouTube channel, like Doty just said. And on my channel, I talk about relocation and my life as a new immigrant in the United Kingdom. And we are keeping it real. So that is me. Nice to be on the stage with the popular and amazing Tochi Esther. I am so, so grateful. I am honored. Thank yeah, you, thank Tochi, you for so this much. opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Ada, for coming and agreeing to share your story. I'm sure a lot of people will take something home from this video. Yeah. So let's just start from the very beginning. When did you move into the UK with your family? I entered the UK on the 1st of October, 2022. So approximately yeah. you've been in the UK for four months or so. Four months. Yeah. yeah. So that means <laughs> you almost lost your job within four months in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious. Guys, this is really serious. You can imagine telling all your friends and family members that you're moving abroad or you got a job and then you go to the UK, start work, you're happy, and in four months <laughs> you're losing your job. Can you imagine that? Anyways, let's continue. So, how has it been working as a domiciliary carer in the UK? Or how was <laughs> it for you working as a domiciliary carer in the UK? Well, um, the truth is that um, sometimes, you know, a lot of people don't really come out to say it as it is, okay? Because at a point, I regretted leaving Doha, right? Because what I saw is not what I expected. I mean, there are a lot of YouTubers that are bold enough to sensitize us about the mystery. Some of us might not even come through that route, right? I'm not discouraging anybody not to come through the mystery because there are better companies, okay? So um, I got the job. My contract was 39 hours. During my interview, I was told it's 39 hours. And I have been working as a carer in Doha. So, so I can let me yes contracts to design. Yes. Five years. Five years. Yeah. yeah. So in my head, maybe I'll be doing eight hours every day, you know, five days a week. I'm done. So I was happy. So nobody told me I would be doing long shifts and all that. Right. I was so happy. I signed my contract. Right. I was happy. I entered the UK. I resumed on the 13th of October. So throughout that October, normal, I was trained. So after the trade, I didn't work that month and I was paid a reasonable amount of money for joining and I was happy. So 1st of November, I started my shadow shift. Five o'clock is the maximum I've been outside during my shadow shift. I was enjoying the job. Not until after two weeks, I finished the shadowing shift and was now given a car. And I think that car they give is the trap. Let me use it that way. <laughs> I was now given a car to start. Your girl was all over the moon. I was jubilating. I was happy. I even shared it with a lot of people. I started my own shifts. So that week I started, I, I was told that I would be working from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Like 7 a.m. In the morning till 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Yes. And you have then, a family, right? You have a child. I have a son of six months as of them and they are aware. So I'm, I'm someone that I'm very outspoken. I, I don't, as in, I don't keep things. So I meet my deputy manager, I said, and she was the one that interviewed me. And when she was interviewing me, she asked me about my family. 
I told her the ages of my kids before she employed me. I did not hide anything. So I met her, I said, how do you expect me to be outside? I will leave as early as 6 30 because I have to be in the class house from 7 a.m. and then return 10 p.m. and I have a child that sucks. Oh. She told me, hey, <laughs> that's what the work entails. I must, I, I should remember I signed at 9 hours contract. I, I'm an engineer, of, of course. I did the calculation right in front of her. I said, 7 to 10 is how many hours? And I will do it for four days in a week. Wow. My dear, that's no longer at 9 hours. That's a Let me remind you, we are counting your hours as the moment you are with the client. And that is what you are paid for. So that, not, that 30 minutes you are with the client is what we know. I now ask her. So the moment I'm moving around, going to the client's house, who, what happens to that hour? She said, it's not paid for. This is wow. the mystery. So that you're was risking your life on I'm the road you, without pay. I'm telling you, that was when my eyes opened. Oh my God. I called the client and I said, let me remind you. I came with that two visa, not charity work visa. Any hour I should do must be paid for. Yeah. Okay. She said there's nothing she can do about it. That's what my job entails, and I must do the job. This is how she said it to me. Like, more than the slavery. Hey! I came home that day with the car. I cried my eyes out. My husband was like, give it a try. Let's see how it goes. You guys, the first week was unbearable. My son, as it went from how many kg to... My son reduced weight immediately. Before I leave, my kids are sleeping. Before I'm back, my kids are sleeping. For that first week, I couldn't see my children. My marriage was affected because, you know, when you are not there, you know, it's, it affected a lot of things. And let me tell you, that three days off I have, my whole system will be like somebody that they, that they, 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 they I don't know, how to, I don't know the right word to use. My husband is now the one that cooks for the family. He's the one taking care of the children and he has to work. So along the line, we even have to go and pay for, for uh, because of the kids. He's the one to take them there. I don't know anything happening in my house. I'm just like a stranger. Um, my dear, the second week I went to them, I said, see, let's reach at a compromise. Okay, I accept. Let me be doing just Two days till 10 and two days till maybe seven. My dear, these people said no. That they cannot guarantee me that. I told them, but I have a child. They said, I, I know I have a child when I signed the contract. And the worst thing is that every day I meet 18 clients. The next day, 17 clients. Like, it was horrible. Along the line, I slumped at work. I was with a client, a woman of 70, 88. I slumped in her house. And when the, she had to call the ambulance. The ambulance was telling her to do CPR because I wasn't breathing. I don't even know what happened to me. You get it? Yeah. So that was when I knew that this is not, I can't do this. That's just the truth. So I was taken to hospital. I meet you, Tochi. You advised me to look for another job because as it is, I can't do the job. So guys, that was it. And I was given one more sick leave. So from November 27 to January 7th or 8th, I was home. I was on sick leave. And my, my health is more important. Nobody deserves to go through that, right? Yeah. You're, you're working, you're contributing, you're paying your tax. You're adding value to the company. You're, they need you just as much as you need them. So you shouldn't go through that kind of treatment from any employer in fact it's against the uk policy uk frowns at it honestly exploitation at work is not accepted people, yeah, should, to, please, yeah. people should learn to speak out it's very important, very important. god when i was being her story i was like no you can't you can't do that you can't like for, there, how long? There, for five years you yeah. want to do that for five whole years exactly that's it exactly you can't my dear it's not, exactly only me. it's not only me others we are crying they dealt with all of I us i know that a lot of people are going through the same thing but you know like i said earlier most people just can't talk because it will affect their jobs their COS, and all that but anyway, that's that for that. Now, can you now tell us how you almost lost your job 
um, because okay. of your tips on YouTube, yeah. So guys, um, there was once a time I made a video about uh, a day in my life as a domiciliary worker. So I have posted the video. Luckily, before I made that video, I'm someone that I know my rights. I am I am educated, of course. So I know the right thing to do and the right thing not to do. So if I uploaded that video, I checked my offer letter again to make sure they did not tell us not to make video while at work and nothing like that. So guys, I checked the company's policy on confidentiality and nothing like that, okay? So I went in, I did most of the video in my car, talking, telling people I will go to the next class. So like two or three clients, I got to their home and I showed people just when I was making tea or coffee for them and when I was doing the laundry, that's all. I did not come and start video in their house to show their house and all that stuff. That was it. Showing people, this is what we do. But you go to people's house individually. So you guys, I posted, a lot of you saw that video and the video was going viral. Now, one of my colleagues in Nigeria, she saw the video, she took it to my company. Of course, my employers are not on my channel. So I was working that very day and my employer called me and said, put down that video. Put that that was how she, I was driving. I was like, which video? Because, you know, well, you know, my brother was gone. I, I don't have a channel. So I didn't get it. She said, the channel you posted on your YouTube. I said, excuse me, I'm driving. So when I packed, I called her back. I said, what happened to my video? She said, eh, you are not supposed to post a video while you're at work. This is that. I should put down that video. She called the call. So I called my husband. My husband said, I should come back. Okay? So she said, I should, um return the company car and their phone that they will have to go through the process and check the video. I was so you have not even checked the video and you commanded me to put down my video. So I got home, I told my husband, I said, I'm not putting down my video because I did not do anything wrong in that video. My husband said, you must put it down or else I'll put it down myself. You must. Because this are you is your, wearing company, your, are you wearing your company, your work uniform? Yes, I was wearing my uniform. Yes, I was wearing their uniform. But I didn't show the name, their name. I, I, I refuse to put down that video because that's how stubborn I can be. I refuse to put down that video. So my husband was the one that deleted the video. So the next, they now send me mail for to come for let's talk about it. Okay. So I wanted to seek the, the advice of a lawyer. So this was happening on a Saturday. They asked me to come on Monday. I sent them email back. You don't have any right to just wake up and uh, call me for a meeting. I will not come. I have to postpone that um, meeting. To like Wednesday or Thursday, they are about. Because I wanted to read. I wanted to be sure that I'm on my rights. So when we get to the meeting, my deputy manager was the one that did the meeting with me. She said, well, Ada, we are sorry we watched the video and not like we did something so strange or we did something so bad, but um, you you would not have shown um, where you are there in the class house at all and you were wearing our uniform. You get? I said, and I asked her, who will pay me for that money I lost for the little my video? I said, you will pay me for it. So we, we started arguing and all that. So she said, let's, we are not done with the investigation, this and that. You get it? So you guys, along the line, I, I went home and I was so bitter. So I allowed them to do their investigation because I know I did not do anything wrong. So a lawyer friend of mine in this UK, I, he, as I sent him the video, so I sent him the raw file, he looked at it and he said, my dear, you did not do anything wrong. Assuming you show the client's face or you are making video of the client's house, that's when we say, or you are getting the pictures on their walls and all that. But you are just showing where you are making tea, where you are bringing clothes from the washing machine. I think your employer just wants to punish you for, for nothing. You get the point. Yeah. So, I was like, it's well, the video has been deleted and there's nothing I can do about it. So after two days, my employer, they sent me a mail and said, um, Ada, we are sorry. And um, after the investigation, we found out that you did not do anything at all. The voice notes, even I went to the office, they still said the same thing. I have the voice notes, I have to record them for future reference. So they apologized. I said, ask them, what about my money that I lost? You will pay me for damages. You get my manager was like, I'm too stubborn. I should be coming. You know, I should calm down. That it is is uh, let everything just be by gone, okay? But the truth is that I know it's time for me to leave, okay? We have finished it, and then another issue came up. I went to work, and after work, 
I I left and remember I forgot something in the class house. I went back to pick it and that same Nigerian girl that reported my channel was in the class house. Okay, so I told her sorry. See, I forgot my paper. In front of her, I picked that paper and left. She reported me to the company that I came back to the class house after I had left. So my company called me again to query me. You know. So at the end of the day, I was like, I think I'm done with these people. This girl, she has something in stock for me. And after some days, I sent them a mail and said, hello, I'm done. I can't do this again. I resigned honorably and it's the best thing that happened to me. And God blessed me with a better job. So that was my story. Wow. Wow. You've had quite an interesting journey in the UK. I call it interesting. It's so tough. Under four months. <laughs> Under four months. Right. Well, I'm glad that you left the job and that you got your new job. So, yeah, thank you so much, Ada, for coming to share with us. Before we go, do you have, like, any advice for anybody watching this? The show? advice is, is, is plenty. And I will make it short. The truth is that people are not informed. In domiciliary care, don't sign anything above 30 hours in domiciliary care. Because you will work your ass out and you will not see the money. And if you have got kids and you are contract at past 30 hours, my dear, leave them behind. I don't say you should not come by this route. I always say it. This, you see healthcare routes, is the cheapest. It's so interesting. There are a lot of benefits that people are not talking about. I shared on my channel that my employer have enrolled me for one month in apprenticeship program, of which I have to start from MVQ3. It's amazing. But just know what you are signing on your contract. Don't sign an hour that you cannot do, especially in domestic really. And also, a lot of you will sign a contract that have a clause that says, if you are living under two years, you pay £6,000. Never sign such contracts. Because once you pay it down, you pay. For example, I did not pay my compensation. You get the point? I did not pay them anything. I left and I left honorably. Okay? So due to the fight I had with them, do you know that some people that left, they will not pay you your salary at the end of the month after that notice? My dear, they paid me my salary with immediate effect because I was ready with them. I told them I have a union unison and I have a personal lawyer and I will, I will sue you. You get the point? So my major advice is know what you are signing and always stand up for what is right always speak out the worst thing that will happen is that they will tell you to stop working and you have three months to get another employer you get it yeah. life is too short for you to be that in the silence life is too short for you to remain unhappy any job that is not giving you time for your family for god and yourself is not worth doing it is not worth doing so tochi that's my advice to people and i pray they listen trust me i pray they listen Thank you so much. I love your courage, you know, for coming to share out of what you've been through. Some people will not even want to talk about it, but I'm glad that you're sensitizing people and letting people know the reality. Thank you so much, Ada. I appreciate you for coming. Guys, Ada has a YouTube channel and her YouTube channel name is Ada Kings. Do well to visit her channel and show her support. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>